G'day ladies and gentlemen, this is Voyager the Second here. Today we are back with another episode of International Public Transport Showcases. In today's episode, we are going back to the Philippines to expand the high speed railway network. This high speed line that we are going to be focusing on today will be heading south from Manila to Taban to the city of Lucena in the province of Quezon. Eventually we'll be extending the Calabarzon high speed railway line further to the southeast which will eventually connect with the city of Sorsogon in the Bicol region. The high speed railway line between Manila, Manila to Taban to Lucena is 140 kilometers with a top speed of 350 kilometers an hour however this will only apply between Lipa and Lucena stations there is also a 30 km branch from Lipa to Batangas with a top speed of 120 km an hour similar to the Akita Shinkansen which uses high speed rolling stock on slow tracks I will no longer look into the the promises that this rail project will deliver it's already been mentioned earlier this video so without further ado let's begin this showcase at Manila to Taban from Manila to Taban, the high-speed platforms are going to be above the new north-south commuter rail platforms on in the station. The high-speed railway platforms will also be at the same level as the Cagayan and Ilocos high-speed rail platforms. It will first take a few, a f at least two kilometers to the north. It will go two, one or two kilometers to the north. It will run with the Cagayan and Ilocos high-speed railways before turning right 90 degrees to the east and then it will run above the existing line in a viaduct it will run entirely on viaducts through Metro Manila in fact probably in the, the entire 140 kilometer line would run with, as viaducts now there's two roads here there's a there's two places where structures are, will overlap the PNR line, which the high-speed railway line will go will go above. But the high-speed railway line will also need to go above structures which fly above the existing PNR line. That includes Dim Asalan Road and Lumentra train stations right here. There are other structures there, but I will not go into further detail. But even with these structures, it's going to make the, the viaduct stick out like a sore thumb. Because around the area, it's just low-rise development. With a few buildings, but they are not in the area. It will continue running alo uh, along the, right above the PNR lines. It will cross the Pasig River following the line. It's just straightforward. You'll know what the PNR line looks like. And then there we will have a stop at Buendia Station. Buendia station for the high-speed railway line would need to be on top of a new building while the existing PNR station would be on the bottom of the building and the reason for that is because there is an intersection right here I will show it to you right now there is an intersection right here where the viaduct would have to fly very high because of, of roads being sandwiched above each other and to people who like the idea of building Buendia station that way they would see that it would probably be, be futuristic but for the pessimist side it would they would say it would look like a sore thumb now Buendia is going to be serving the city of Makati and Makati is a big employment district and there's also lots of shopping malls in the Ayala in in Ayala right here and I also forgot to mention that the top speed of of the Manila Buendia section is only going to be 115 kilometers per hour. Now the trains will accelerate from Buendia to a top speed of 150 kilometers an hour, 150, and it will fly over the interchange through a very tall viaduct. It would still rem keep running above the existing PNR line, but then the the high-speed railway line will deviate from the existing PNR line and will continue running along 
South Luzon Expressway or the Calabazon Expressway. And then from here, the trains will accelerate to a top speed of 270 kilometers per hour. We reach the intersection at Muntinlupa here, and the high speed line will have to go into the inner curve of the expressway right here, and then go to the outer curve, flying above the interchange, but also what else is there is that it's also going to demolish some properties otherwise what we can do for the best is to just build a tunnel instead so that way we do not have to acquire properties at Muntinlupa and the reason for opposition of projects is not because of costs but it's because of property acquisition and the more pro properties you acquire the bigger the opposition of the project gets now the high speed railway line will run on the center of the expressway again and then we leave the national capital region of Manila and then we enter into the province of Laguna. It will still remain at a top speed of 270 kilometers an hour due to some sharp curves along the expressway including one here, here and then we, we enter, we sneak into Cavite for a bit and then we enter here, we go back to Laguna and then to through here. And then we have a stop at Santa Rosa City. And the reason I chose to stop at Santa Rosa is because next to the station where I, where I plan to place it, there is the existing Enchanted Kingdom theme park. And if we put a stop here, that would boost the, the tourism and patronage of Enchanted Kingdom. And also around Santa Rosa, are housing developments and the problem with the housing developments in Santa Rosa right now is that they develop very slowly but if we put high-speed ra rail in Santa Rosa it would bring a migration boom into the city and at the same time it will also provide white-collar jobs for higher incomes in Santa Rosa so that way you don't have to pay for your transport and you can still earn a very high income by working locally from Santa Rosa, the speed limit will be raised to 300 kilometers per hour, and it's going to be straightforward here. It will just run on the center of the expressway, but once we reach the Columba curve right here, the line will start to deviate from the expressway, and it would run as a viaduct. Go separately from the expressway, it will no longer run parallel to the expressway. Now it's going to run through beside a mountain here, it might run just on ground, not on a viaduct, and then it would run as a viaduct again through Santo Tomas, and then it would just, uh, it's pretty straightforward until we get to the to Lipa station. And Lipa station is also another train station. I also forgot to mention that there are express and all stop services. Lipa station is both an express and an all stop station but some express trains will pass, will bypass Lipa station for the sake of commuters in Lucena. But there are also express trains which go from Lipa straight to Buendia and M Manila. Why? Because you also have the Batangas branch. Now from Lipa, the, li the lines are going to split, but to first we will focus on the Lucena part of the line, the high speed line. After that, we will focus on the slower line. Now from Lipa station, the speed limit of the tracks is increased to 350 kilometers per hour. And it's, o it's also gonna be pretty straightforward. It's only just gonna be viaducts along the way. It will take a 90 de degree turn to the left, heading towards the east. Travel really fast here. And then eventually we approach the city of Lucena but first we have to encounter the sharp curve. Trains are going to slow down and all trains will terminate at Lucena for the time being. Now, eventually we will extend the high speed railway line to the city of Sorsogon in the Bicol region. And that is the overall 140 kilometers we've looked at. So now we will go into the Batanga branch. Stay tuned. We are now back in Lipa station and now we will be looking at the Batangas branch. And from here, the Batangas branch is going to deviate from the high speed railway line and trains using it will slow down to a slow 120 kilometers per hour. 
there will be one stop at Padre Garcia just to serve a major town and we can have potential for development in the city but we may not have much development because this, the trip from Batangas to Manila is going to be 55 minutes as well it's going to be 55 minutes now from Padre Garcia the, the speed remains limit remains 120 but then we reach this curve here just outside of Rosario just the fringes of Rosario where the trains will slow down to 65 and then accelerate again to 120 kilometers an hour and then the trains will approach Rosario and stop there to serve the, t the town like Padre Garcia it has the potential to grow but not as much as Santa Rosa, Lipa nor Lucena from Rosario the trains will, will travel at 120 kilometers an hour until we reach this curve at Ibaan and in this section right here trains will go through the town at 70 kilometers an hour otherwise all trains are gonna be stopping at Ibaan station anyway they won't be passing through it unless they are doing test runs and then when we get out of that curve the speed limit would be go back to 95 and then once we hit this straight line here, the speed is going to increase to 120 kilometers an hour. Now, it's going to go over this river. I forgot the name of the river, but it will go 120 kilometers an hour over this river here on a bridge. It would remain on land. And also, I forgot to mention that the Batangas branch is also going to be mostly built on ground level and not on viaducts to save money but at the same time it would acquire more property and that is where opposition is gonna roar off fr against this project just because of it being built on ground and the speed now the speed limit is gonna slow down to 95 here and then it will slow down to 60 here and then eventually all the trains will terminate at Batangas terminal and also at Batangas terminal is the SM Batangas mall and, and that is a really good location to build the stop at Batangas and that is your entire project for today ladies and gentlemen now we have a few announcements to outline before we leave Rodrigo Duterte should check out my high-speed rail videos I will be re-uploading them in the near future it might take a few months it might take a few weeks to a few months but I also have to focus on other projects such as a new metro line instead of it going through Olympic Park I decided that it would go through Victoria Road and then I would also plan other public transport projects overseas so anyway guys I'm gonna wrap this up don't forget to subscribe to the channel like and favorite the video I will see you next time goodbye for now